Now they always say congratulations. Work so hard for the whole two vacation. So we are back, small Rockies franchise boy here in the show, 17th of today. It'll be an episode where we go and I guess check out what our team is after that one loss to the LA Dodgers on opening day. So we lost 3-2 there against Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers. And now we made e Clayton Kershaw get an ERA of 3 on the season, so that's not that bad, I guess. But still, we lost nonetheless. So 7 hits apiece, pretty decent game though. We're pretty well matched up until obviously they scored the game-winning run. But nonetheless... Pretty good game though for opening day of the season, whereas Desmond and Hope Mayhew both the home runs and RBI on the season, they're great solo shots in, I think it might have been the sixth inning for us, but uh, take a look at the overall pitching, we only had two pitches playing for us, they had like four or five for some reason, but we had two, John Gray and Estevez, Estevez played fantastic, though five strikeouts and only two innings pitched, this man is just amazing, but uh, John Gray, seven innings pitched, seven hits, three earned runs, and ten strikeouts, kind of ten on the day, so I mean... I mean, it was a pretty good game, though. I thought it was pretty great for us. We Just the only problem is, is our offense didn't kick in the last part of the game where we need to go and score some runs. That's the only reason why we lost, because we didn't score enough runs, which is basic baseball. But nonetheless, Clint Kershaw, those six innings pitched, five hits, two hundred runs, 14 strikeouts. He was amazing in the day. Just he had through some filthy stuff all day long, though. When you're facing off against Clayton Kershaw, there's bound to be strikeouts, and he had a lot of them. But nonetheless, we have Libertore, came in, point two innings pitch, one hit, one walk, one strikeout. Then Garcia, one inning pitch, one hit, two strikeouts, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, pretty good game for both teams involved, but the Dodgers came out with the W on the day. So, now we're 0 1 the season. Not that bad, though. We are in a team, we are in a, in a division that is filled with great teams, though. Take a look at our division right now. As a whole, we have the Giants 1 0, Dodgers 1 0, Diamondbacks 1 0, and we have the 0 1 Rockies and Padres. So, our division, we're basically going to go and somehow battle back against the Diamondbacks, Dodgers, and the Giants, because the Diamondbacks. They're not that bad this season, though. You gotta watch out for the Diamondbacks. It could be great this season. Dodgers, always amazing. And the Giants, they're pretty good in this game, though. Unlike real life right now, where they're kind of struggling, they're pretty good in this game for this season. But we'll go take a look at our roster as a whole and see if we need to make any moves before we do go and sim a pretty big chunk of the season, probably about a month or two. But uh, I pretty know just the one, one month. But our lineups, we do have one change we gotta make, though, and that is... Should we go and leave Kiki Escalona in the MLB? That's the problem here, because Kiki, he's an outfielder. We have an outfielder in the bench uh, with Jordan Patterson, but I don't know if I want Patterson or Escalona playing. That's the thing. Patterson, he's a bit older, 26 years old, whereas Kiki Escalona is only, it looks like, 19 years old. So he's got a very, a very long time ahead of him, whereas Patterson's seven years older than him, seven years more experience in baseball with that system. But I think Patterson might leave him on the MLB club, bring down Kiki because he's a rookie, and he just needs... To go and develop just a bit in the minors before we bring him up and he plays like a superstar. So, Kiki, get out of here. Bring in Jordan Patterson as our DH and as our main outfielder on the bench. And we're going to do one more move, though, on the bench, though. We'll go do one more thing. Yeah, Patterson's in there. Now move um, Kiki Escalona down to... I don't know what I'm doing here. Move Kiki Escalona down to the AAA. So, we'll go to outfielder prospects right here. Go to center field. And bring him down to the AAA and bring up one man... Who I think might be pretty good for us this season at shortstop, and his name is Pat Valaika. So he's a 68 overall. He's pretty young, but he's not that bad though. He's got some great stats going start off. He's got good defense, good speed, all right hitting. I mean, his power is not where it's at, but I mean, we need a guy to play shortstop and second base if one of our uh, players goes down, like Trevor Story during the game. So we need a backup guy. Pat's our guy. We'll bring him up there. Plus, he's a real life prospect. Which, uh, well, not a real life prospect, but a real life guy in the system. Why not bring him up? So bring up Pat there to the MLB club and use him this season as a bench shortstop, I guess. Shortstop slash second baseman. So go to lineups. And there's Pat there on the bench with Mark Reynolds and Tony Walters some of the time. So I think this is a pretty good look, pretty good looking bench right there, though. We have Pat, Mark Reynolds, Jordan Patterson, and Oscar Hernandez on most of the days. So not that bad of a looking lineup right there. Do we need to make any changes, though, on our lineup? That's the thing. So we do have Andrew McCutcheon there at a four spot. I'm pretty sure he's just mad because he's not playing as well yet. Yeah, it's because he's not really playing that well yet. But, uh, do you make any lineup changes before we do anything? We have Blackman, 86 overall. What's up with him? Yeah, and this is because team performance. Okay. So, I think we're good with our lineup, so we're pretty good with that. Because, or should we bring up DJ LeMahieu, though? That's the thing. DJ needs more at-bats, that's for sure. He's a monster, though, at the plate. So, DJ, gotta bring you up there. Maybe replace Patterson there. Maybe even replace Story if I wanted to. Should we go maybe... Kutch, Story, Patter, uh, Blamehu. This might be good because then you have a contact guy like McCutcheon, who's even, even a power guy himself there too. 
Then you have a power guy with Trevor Story, obviously 85, 86 power. Then you have a contact guy in DJ. And then you bring up yet another power guy. So I think we're good there with our lineups right now. They look pretty good though for us. So we'll go move on and sim a few weeks, I guess, and see how it goes. But wait, hold up. Left handed. I think I'm good with left handed. Yeah, because I'll bring up a more better left handed guy. So I'll bring up a McCutcheon right there. LeMayu is obviously better. Nolan Leonardo and Desmond and Blackman are all good. So I think we're good there. We've got to be good. What about left handed DH? We'll go bring up him too. Because story doesn't need to be up there. So now Kutch 88 overall. We pretty much maximize the overall for the top. I mean, go, because I think 88 is the max you can go from McCutcheon right now, at least, before he gets his huge morale boost, like maybe even a 90 overall. Who really knows? Maybe if we do get a great team performance out of this month, and let's see what maybe if McCutcheon's overall goes up a bit to maybe 90 overall. Could happen, though. You never really know. So, now Kutch 88 overall, Trevor Story is still down there, 83, David Dell 80 overall, and so on and so forth all the way down there. So we're good there. Let's go ahead and check out our rotation right now and see if we need to make any changes there. So... Rotation-wise, I don't think we need to really make too many changes. I want Zach Birdie to be on the MLB club this season because he's amazing, first fact. And second overall, I just want, like, he's 23 years old. We want to bring him up to the MLB as soon as possible, max out his potential as quick as possible, too, because we want him to be good as good as soon as possible so we can use him in this franchise mode. So I'll leave up Birdie for now, see if he, how well he plays in a month. Same with Daniel Finn, see how well he plays in a month. So if these two guys suck... Bring him down to the AAA, bring up, maybe even a sign along a well, reliever if we wanted to, or even bring up one of the guys that we drafted last season at 70 overall. So we got a backup plan if that fails or not. But it looks like John Gray, though, is looking fantastic this season, though. I hope he's a great overall season, is as rocky in the second year of the franchise mode, and brings up his potential, possibly. I'm not really sure. So we'll go and sim up to possibly this Pittsburgh series. He's gonna play. McCutcheon versus former team in Pittsburgh because I don't want to play at Coors Field again. We played at Coors Field too many times in the past few gameplay episodes. So we'll go and sim up to the 21st hour of May and check out what our scouting is first. Hold up, scouting. Scouting is one of those things I have to do this season though. So I won't show it in the game, in the obviously the sim because it take too long. But I'll go and scout every, or whatever, maybe three days, two days, and see if I can get the scouting good this season because last season. I didn't really do too, many, too much scouting at all. We had a decent draft this year. This season, I'm aiming to go draft some studs in the draft, so we gotta do some scouting if you wanna do that. So we'll go and scout right now, just go start it off for this episode. So I don't know if we should just fire these scouts or not. These are just terrible, though. We have some good, some few discovery guys that are decent. Like, this dude's good. This guy, I'm not really sure too much about. It looks like Perez isn't the greatest international guy for a scout. So should we go and fire him if we could? So, do we fire Perez? That's the problem. Because Perez, he's making 979k, not that bad for an international scout. But could we find a better guy, though, for a similar price tag? Okay, so just for a little bit more money, we could go maybe fire Perez and bring up McConnell. Because I want to go and... Well, not McConnell, but Connell. Because I think he might be... We, like, we want to draft some international talent. These guys are good in the Dominican Republic. They're insanely good at baseball. Cubans, there's tons of great baseball players overseas. we got to maximize that and bring up some Dominicans if you wanted to in the draft. So in order to do that, we got to go fire to Perez and bring up a guy who's actually good at efficiency and positional players, and his name is Connell. Wait, or unless we can find a pitcher guy, because we want to get some pitchers too, obviously. So pitchers, we had Discovery right there. Uh, we could maybe get that dude if you wanted to, but that'll be like a lot of money, though. It'll be a lot. So we have Perez 979k, but we do have international scout McConnell at 1.393, 81 efficiency, 79 positional players. So he can discover talent, but he could scout the talent that's already there. And I want to see if there's any good international talent already there. If not, I gotta find a good guy for discovery. So go discovery or uh, scouting and see if there's any good international dudes on this list. So okay, so score yeah scout this a bit. So positional players, that's what we need to go find. So, do we have any international good guys on here? We have actually not that bad of players. We have Alexis Pinto. We have, like, a lot of players that may be good. I'm not really sure. Like, even this dude, like Thomas Nischel. We have... I want to look for some guys who might be able to be ready in a few seasons. So, you could have, like, maybe even Gonzalez at left field. 18 years old. He's not that bad looking for an outfielder prospect. But anyone else? We do have, like, David Lopez. I mean, we have a pretty good overall... Uh, Skill base, like a uh, crop of talent there for this season. That's already the East, though. So, I mean, 
there's a decent amount of talent that are in the international for positional players. So I might go and bring in a new scout to go and uh, basically uh, scout for Perez because Perez is just terrible though. Got to bring up somebody better if you want to go and get some good uh, draft picks. Daniel Perez and Hire Connell. There you go. So they did that. We have Rich Morin, we have Bradley Connell, Louise Carlton, and, and Tad Askin still from the original regime. So I think we're good there for scouts. I think we're good there for now. Maybe go and do some scouting there on some pitchers that are in the system. So Rich, let's see what he can go find for some pitchers. So we'll take a look at this. And what are we talents? So central. Let's go find some central pitchers here. So do we have any central guys? We have like Matt Koshin. He wouldn't be that bad though. He seems like he might be not that bad of a player. We have Charles Stevenson. Any other great players though here? We really have not, not many players there in the central. So we could maybe get him for some discovery. You never know that. But actually, no, I might send out... Hold up, hold up. So Carlton, I might bring him out to the east and find some pitchers though. I might do that. Because he's great discovery, great pitching, great positional players. I mean, he's an overall great talent there for a scout. So Carlton, even though he's not really that efficient for uh, scouting, we'll go ahead and bring him in for some discovery of talent. So let's go to the east and find some great pitchers there in the east if we could. Let's get a pitcher, find some lefties, clutch, and go to the east right there. There we go. So we got Bert, him out on assignment to go and find some pitchers from the east that are clutch. Anyone else here on there? Uh, check out some guys. So do we have Connell on anything? Efficiency 79 and positional players. So let's go put him on some positional players on the international. So do you have any other positional players on the international that you want to go and target specifically? Uh, check this out. So we'll go to international and we do have maybe like Victor Santiago could be a dude. No, he's like only 60. Never mind. Uh, we have Thomas Nichel, who's a starting pitcher. A lot of starting pitchers from the international, that's for sure. A lot. We have any other dudes on here though at all? We have... Ugh, I can't really find that many. International, not too many positional players on here. And Discovery isn't his greatest talent, so... I don't know if we can even find it yet though. I think we're, we might have to go and fire him again. We have Victor Santiago, that's pretty much it though for, for that. So should we go and maybe put him on Victor Santiago, get him one player in, then fire him? Or just go find a new new guy? I might go do that. Just go fire him and find a new guy. So, positional and discovery could be his niches right here. It's good stuff. So, uh, positional players and efficiency. Where do we find some international guys that are good at that? So this dude's not that bad. The discovery 85, efficiency 71, but he's not that good at positional players. Let's see this dude. West, not that great. Any international dudes? We have Perez there again. Who's not good at Discovery? Jeffers, not that good at Discovery. Any guys that are good at Discovery though, anybody. I Maybe mean, this dude, I guess. Brennan might not, not be that bad. So he might be our only option here for a cheap international pro uh, scout, I guess, for now. So Fire Connell, bring in Brennan, and go do some Discovery on some international players, positional players, that is. Let's go do that. Go. We'll go find some infield talent. We have a lot of outfield talent. Why not infield talent? We'll do that. We'll bring in some arm strength guys, or even fielding for now. We'll go... Uh, we don't, you don't want really power infield guys, we'll go for speed. Like some speedy shortstops maybe, or even a speedy third baseman, I really have no idea. Or even just power, we'll go arm strength and fielding, we'll do that. We want a good fielder guy to go play the bench. We'll go find him on the international. So can you find a good international for the bench? Now Haskins for the outfield and East. Should we do that? We have positional players, Discovery is 84, and the East. So I want to go discover some positional players from the East though. So we got outfield power and the East. Should we do that maybe? Or go infield again. We'll go infield and we'll go find contact and we want some batting guys. So contact and power, why not do that for now? That's pretty much good there. So we have a few guys on assignments now for the season pitcher's discovery. Should we have this dude Marin on a better guy? So you have on Sanchez from the Central. So you found a better guy. I want to find a better dude to go and scout. So Central, where are you at? Four good pitchers. So we have like Lyle Rutledge. He might not be that bad for his the draft position. We have Matt Koshin or Koenig. Um We might go just do Lyle Rutledge. He might be pretty good. Let's go assign him to Lyle. So we're good there now. I think we're pretty good for uh, central pitching. So yeah, we're good there for now. So scouting, I'll do that every once in a while for like probably every three or four days during the sim and I'll see you at the end. So day two scouting, we do in fire our, uh, the one last guy. I think his name is Brennan 
Four in favor of Avili's just a beast at scouting though. 97 efficiency, 70 discovery, 90 positional players. I think we might need to go and scout a few Dominican players because some of these guys are just amazing looking. Like Sanchez is going to be a beast. So we're going to go and put Avili's on Sanchez for now. And hopefully I want to go through mow down most of these guys. Like I'll go and get Felipe next. I'll go get, I don't know. Uh, who else is on here for Dominicans? Maybe Donald Nakajima. Uh, Nakajima could be good too, even. So I'll go and do that for the next few scouting things like Nakajima. Then we'll go probably, I don't know, Andres Padilla. Then probably Serrano. Because I got to get some of these guys scouted that we went and uh, first uh, discovered. So I think he might be good for now. I think next up I need to go do is get a guy who can actually go and... Uh, Good efficiency for pitchers too. I might need to go do that. So next up on the chopping block could be maybe Carlton in favor for a guy who's good at efficiency. And during the sim though, no wild thing is though for six months of the torn labrum or labrum. Oh god! So the one guy I thought would get tons of progression this season is now for six months, half the year, pretty much the entire season. If you think about it. So. I don't know what to do. We'll go and put him on the 60 day DL, and I gotta see what's going on here. So, we won a few games here, though, too. Now we're 3 and 5 in the season, not that bad for us, as Daniel Finney got W the other day. But Eric Hosmer on the trading block, too. So, I don't know what's going on here in the MLB. It's pretty crazy now, but we'll go check out what's going on here and see what's up. So, Daniel Finn's still in the MLB. Carlos Estevez now in the DL. You have Java Chamberlain. Zach Brady is now down in the AAA, who's doing terrible. We have Ben, who's doing pretty well. So, I mean, we have a pretty good few a few good guys on here that might be able to be called up eventually. But Adam Adovino, though, is playing pretty well, though, too. He's your ERA over two innings pitch. Not that bad for him. Well, will take a look at our rotation now and see how it's going. So, Rasmus, I don't know why he's so pissy, though. Why is he so mad? I guess it's maybe your team sucks, but still, I don't know why he's so pissed off. He's not making money, though. Just have to be good with what he has right now. But right now... Our pitching, we have John Gray at a 3 ERA, we have a 7 ERA out of Tyler Anderson, we get a 4.5 out of uh, Stephen Wright, and a 1.6 out of Robbie Ray, though, he's playing very well for us right now. So, Robbie Ray, pretty good right now for us, but we'll go take a look at our bench, our uh, bullpen. So, Daniel Finn, a 1.8 ERA, pretty good for him. Mike Dunn's at a 13.5 ERA. Chamberlain's at a 4.05. Salas at a 0. McGee at a 0. And Adam Adovino at a zero so we're doing very well for us i think our starters are getting deep in the games though, that's for sure because right now barely even our relievers are being even used yet so our starters getting it done i guess for the majority of the games or we're just leaving them in there and taking the heat i guess i'm not really sure what we're doing right now but we'll go and take a look at our triple a see if anyone's doing well there so davison field 2.45 era a nine of castellini a 3.3 you know at uh, jeff hoffman and Derek garcia at a zero and prince shipley at a 1.29 so these guys are killing it in the triple a though like shipley garcia and enfield are playing very well for us but do we have any guys on the relief that are playing well we have ward at a three we have a lot of guys that are terrible gary taylor and ross at a zero and Bowden at a 1.5 so maybe even bring a Bowden if we wanted to he's got some filthy stuff for him so Maybe bring him up, I guess? We could do that, actually, because we need some guys on the bench, that's for sure. Unless your 25-man roster is used up, and it's not even used up yet. So we'll probably go bring up Bowden off the AAA up to the MLB club and use him up for a bit. And see if he sucks. If he does, bring him right back down. So we got a few relievers now on the team, and we probably might be able to take a look at maybe getting uh, this face in the MLB club. Uh, what's his name again? Jack Raspins, get him... Just get him out of the system, bring him in the bullpen or something, because he's sticking up the rotation right now for us, for sure. So, if his ERA goes above 4, I'm taking him out, bring him in the bullpen, bring in another guy to go and pitch for the rotation. I might do that for now. Maybe even bring up Prince Shipley, though. He's playing very well for us in the AAA. So, bring up Shipley, bring down Erasmus if it, all hell breaks loose for him. But Bowden now on the MLB club, hopefully he plays well for us in relief. So, I think we're good there for now. We'll probably go and check out some of the scouting once again because we went and did a little bit more scouting. So, scouting now. Derek Villiers, that all I learned about Jamie Sanchez. Okay, so he's done for me right now. Anyone else that's good though? We have Stevenson. Is he fully done for with Marin? We'll go to the scouts right there. Stevenson's done. Okay, so he's well, pretty much done for now. I will go and check out what Jamie Sanchez has to offer though. Jamie Sanchez looks like a beast though for now. Let's go do second base and check out Jamie Sanchez. So what does he have to offer though? He's got 50 to 60 arm accuracy, great arm accuracy. His contact is great. His power is not the greatest. His arm strength is above average. His stealing is amazing. So this dude has got some speed. He's got some arm accuracy. He's got great speed, great fielding, pretty good contact. I mean, he's your 
perfect overall second baseman, so his potential is at a 70 though, that's the problem. So Sanchez is not really a good option there to go and scout or go and draft possibly in the first round. Maybe a fifth round talent could be put pretty good for us. So leave it at that there for now for Sanchez. Any other players should probably go and scout for now. So probably go with Felipe Campillo. I'll probably do that for next. Let's go to Campillo and get him scouted with Avili. He's right there. And hopefully Capillo turns out very well for us because he's got a 2020 ERA for or ETA for MLB. So it could be up pretty soon if we get Capillo there on the team. But we gotta go find some more talent there for the outfield, that's for sure. So Carlton, what are you done for pitchers yet in the East? Is there any good pitchers in the East yet? So we have a ton of pitchers though, just a huge amount. So me bringing in a guy could do a little bit of scouting on the pitchers. You guys are pretty good for the East for scouting, I guess. So maybe you leave it right there for now, we'll probably go get some more talent that are scouted in the infield in the East. I think we might be good for that too, eventually. So, eventually bring in a guy who's good at uh, getting talent in the East for infield. And maybe bring in a guy for Brandon Cochran though. He's looking pretty special for us right now. He's got 80 overall, 80 potential, 2019. This dude could go maybe first round possibly. So, we get a stud relief pitcher there from Brandon Cochran. Do we have a guy who's good at uh, pitching for uh, efficiency? And... It doesn't look like Vili is good, is good at that yet. He's good at positional players. But we have Carlton on here. He's pretty good at discovery. Only thing is efficiency, though. And I think this might be in... A, it looks like it might be in Marin's bullpen. Or uh, his range. So we'll go and bring in Marin on Cochran for now. Because I think Stevenson's going to be a bust, though, for sure. So Cochran, get him as good as soon as possible. See what he's all about. If he's good, just draft him, obviously. Because he's got 2019 ETA, 80 overall potential. 80 overall just base, I mean, this dude could be fantastic, maybe even 99 overall, potentially, you never know. So, we might be able to get one of the best relievers in all of baseball in a few years in this draft. So we'll leave it right there for scouting, go see him a few more games and see how we're doing for scouting after that. So take a look at our lineup though, after a few weeks of scouting, and right now it just looks like a disaster though, like we're not playing well at all. So, what should we do here is so see if Blackman at leadoff, batting 216 though at this point, so he's just doing terrible. Maybe what we could do, DJ's batting 325. Bring up DJ, obviously. You want him as many bats as possible. So bring up DJ, bring down Blackman. He sucks right now. Aeronauta's batting a 204, too. So maybe bring up McCutcheon just a bit. Now we have our studs there in the top three. Aeronauta, 190, 190 for story, though. It's garbage. Patterson's at a 267, though. So Patterson's even better than what Blackman has to offer. So. Let's see if Blackman could get it maybe a bit up after a few games playing lower in the rota in the lineup. We could do that. We got David Dell batting 200 and 130 from Oscar Hernandez. So it's not looking good at all for any of the players in this rotation. But we could do the same for this next lineup and see what it looks like after that. Okay, so I switched up the lineups here right after that. This huge blunder early on in the season. So you have DJ now lead off, we have Cutch in third, and we have Arenado in fourth. So I think it's pretty good for us for now because Arenado's struggling. We have LeMay who's playing very well. We have Ian Desmond playing very well, or at least decently, like playing decent. But we have Kutch batting very well 304 at this point in the season. Arenado at 204. We have uh, Blackman at 216. We have Bla looks like we have Patterson at 267. David Dahl at 200. Jerry at 190. And Hernandez at 130. So. It's not looking good for anybody involved here. We might be able to just bring in Tony Walters, see what he could do for now for us. Because, I mean, we just suck at this point, though. We're terrible. We're 3-9 in the season. We're not playing at all. Very, like, we're playing garbage in the past few games. So, hopefully these lineup changes go and switch, switches us up just a bit. And hopefully it rejuvenates our team offensively. So, we'll go to our pitching, though, and see how well that's playing. So John Gray at a 1.93 E rate, he's playing very well for us, through 18 innings pitched. We have Anderson at 4.5, Steve Wright at a 4.5, Robbie Wright at a 3, and we do have a 2 point, I mean a 6.1 as Jack Erasmus. So Erasmus, get the hell out of here though, you're playing garbage right now for us. So maybe go and bring him down to the bullpen, because I've never liked the guy from the start though at all. So we'll go and bring in a free agent possibly at starting pitchers. So do you have anybody in here we could probably go and sign? Yeah, Jesse Chavez here possibly. You have Ubaldo Jimenez. Maybe Ubaldo might be not that bad. He only wants 550k. Jesse Chavez wants 2.0 million. And Alaska wants 2.1. Jared Weaver wants 5.5. So I mean, or 5.500k. So I mean, it's between Weaver and Ubaldo Jimenez. So Jimenez, or Jimenez, we have 87, or 69 and 69. So pretty much the same. I might go with Jimenez over what we've rest offers. So we'll give him a one-year deal worth 550k, what he wants, as 
possibly a depth roll, do that. So once they had one more year, why not add a year? We'll probably get rid of them anyway. We could do it. Oh, look, wait, hold up. I don't want to pay them more money than just years because I don't want to do that at all. I'll put them in the rotation. How about that? He just wants years though, damn it. So I'll give him two years, fine, I'll do that. Two years, you might retire after this anyway. So two years, 9.9, .9, 1 million. 1.1, there we go. So you finally got Jimenez there on the team as a long relief guy. Let's go to our roster or our rotation. And now he's there on long relief. So bring in him over Erasmus because Erasmus is just terrible though. He's garbage right now for us. Even though he may look good with the, the strikes and the balls in check. He's just not that good though, he's barely even that good at all. So hits per 9, he's terrible letting up hits, that's why he sucks in this game. So Jimenez, he's a lot better though, he's a lot more balanced than Erasmus, and he seems to bring the veteran element to the team that we want. So we're good there for now for rotation, hopefully Jimenez pans out for us. Or Robbie Ray's playing very well for us at a 3 ERA, Stephen Ray 4.5, 4.5 for Tyler Anderson, and a 1.93 for John Gray at this point. So... Other than that though, our team looks pretty good though for pitchers, and Daniel Finn, 4.66, we got Ben Bowden at a 0, McDonough at 15.75, but we could bring down Mike Dunn for sure. He's playing like garbage right now for us. Let's go bring down Mike Dunn, because I've never done this before, we have to go and bring down players so frequently though, I thought our players were good. Let's bring him down to AAA. We should bring him from AAA though. AAA, he's birdie maybe? He's got a 3.6. Anybody playing well though, we have Bowden at a zero though, I mean, there's a great uh, bring up right there for us. We have Gary Taylor, I might bring up Zach Birdie though, why not? Test him out again, see if he plays well, if he doesn't, then why not bring him down again? So we're good there for now, he's got a 10 ERA less than what Mike Dunn had, so it's an upgrade nonetheless. So we're good there for now, for that. What about Jabba Chamberlain at 4.375? For Adam Salas at a zero so far, McGee at a zero, and a six for Adam Adovino, so... I don't know what's going on there, hopefully we should get it all in check by the, the end of this uh, simulation because I want to actually be good by the time we face off against the Pirates. So now next to these are scouting though, our scouting, Guy Haskins has done his infielder's assignment, uh, Felipe Campillo's done, and that's pretty much it. So all of our assignments besides Carlton are done and Karakun uh, are done. So now you have Villy's here. So who do we have for, I think it might have been second baseman for Campillo. There he is. So he seems to be legit though. Pillow seems to be legit. So he's got 80 overall or 80 potential, 55 overall. This guy's a stud. Let's see what he has to offer though. Stealing's not that bad. His speed's pretty decent. Uh, what's above average though? Nothing really well above average. We have above average stats in, it looks like speed and stealing. So he's more of a stealing and speedy kind of guy. And his contact is just about average. His power is below average. His feeling's above average. Um. Anything else, his reaction is above average, so I mean, it's not the bad fork, Felipe Campillo, not the greatest, but not that bad nonetheless. So we're good there for now, for international second baseman. Uh, what other guys should go for at this point? So Villies, where should we put you for now for internationals? So we could maybe put him at third base. Maybe go for Donald Nakajima. I'll do that. So get him on the Donald for now. We do have Cochran still being scouted by Marin, and we have Haskins who needs to go get another assignment. So positional players, discovery, where should we go there for now? Maybe outfield for now, because he did infield. Let's go outfield and check out see if we can find some good fielding, and we'll go speedy guys, why not? Right now, fielding and contact, we'll do that, and get him out on the east. There we go, so we got his assignment now, where should we go for now at this point? They think we're good there for now. Let's go to... Our simulation. Now let's sim through this weekend and see how it's going here. At least this two series is. So Jesus no, no longer injured. Lewis William is back. We'll do that. And we suck though. We, we went two for two. So we're not the greatest. We're five and eleven at this point. We're terrible. And San Fran's at a ten and seven record. And Arizona's at a nine and seven record. So it's still early though. Nonetheless, it's still early. We can make a comeback if you want to. But at this point, we suck though. Obviously, so we won against Granky and we won against Neil Ramirez. So we won against the good guys, but we lost against Patrick Corbin and Jeff Samarja, though. So not that good for us. But uh, Yaboli Jimenez, a 6.75 ERA, not good for him either. Damn it. What's up with, with all these guys sucking at this point? Let's go to our roster, see what's going down here. Birdie one got sent down, and that's about it. So anything that's going on here, we have Mike Dunn still in the AAA. 
Why isn't Birdie up though? I thought Birdie was doing not that bad. He's got a 3.86 ERA down in the AAA. So with the scouting again, we do have all of our assignments pretty much complete at this point. And now we get to take a look at our reliever pitcher in Cochran. And Cochran, he's a bust though, a 65 overall. I thought he was good and turns out he's just average. So Cochran, nothing special there for the East. Anybody else here that might be good though, for sure. So we have to go ahead and scout as many players in the East though as possible because you never know if some of these 65 overall guys might be good. So you never really know at this point. So should we go for, I guess, like a Richie Lan Lancaster? We have Mario or Ario. We have, like, who else do we even go for at this point? International. Where should we go for Avilles too? Uh, let's see where Avilles was before. I think he was at third base. Wasn't he? He was. So Nakajima, he's nothing special either. A 70 overall for potential and a 54 is average right now for overall. So Nakajima nothing special either over there in the international, but maybe you go for Luis Reyna, my f might be good for now. So Reyna, get him scooted right there. Anybody else for Carlton? Carlton, what should we do for him? Discovery, pitchers, positional players. So maybe discover some more pitchers there in the east might be good. Or maybe we just fire him for now. Because we gotta go get some pitchers actually scouted for now too. We have a lot of pitchers to scout go through at this point. So, could be the best just to go and probably fire uh, Carlton for now and bring up a guy from the East that has efficiency. Okay, so send up to around uh, May 1st here. And right now, on May 1st, we're not doing that bad though. We've won, what is it, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 4 and 1 in the last 5. So, it's not that bad going into May. As now our, our scouting is doing not that bad either. And even our pitching are doing very well too. So, Yabali Jimenez, the guy picked up though, 16 inning innings pitched, and a 2.81 ERA. So, he's actually making a difference here in rotation compared to what Jack Erasmus has done. So, Jimenez is pretty successful so far. Robbie Ray at a 4.15, a 3.25 for Steven Wright, a 3.3 for Tyler Anderson, and a 3.21 for John Gray. So, rotation looking very fine at this point. And our bullpen, we got Daniel Flynn at a 3.29, brought that down just a bit. We have Erasmus at a 5.46. We have Jobin Chamberlain at a 4.66. Fernando Salas at a 1.64. Jake McGee at a 0 0.84. So, he's playing very well for us. And Montevito at a 4 even. So not that bad there for rotation. Our lineups, you have DJ batting 295 at leadoff. We have Ian Desmond 240. You have 263 for Andrew McCutcheon. You have 292 for now for Nolan Arenado. So he's playing very well. Maybe bring him up now to that position. Could be good for him. We have Trevor Story batting 250. We have 229 for Jordan Patterson. A 243 for Blackman though. So he's brought that up just a bit. David Dahl batting 250 there on the season at 8th spot. So... It might be time to go bring up a few players if we wanted to. So Trevor Story, will leave him there for now. Patterson, maybe bring in Escalona there for now too, because Escalona, or even he's, he's not really playing that well either. Mark Reynolds at a 187. We have Pat Vlak at a 345, though. Oh, he's playing very well for us in 29 at-bats. And Oscar Hernandez at a 119. So our lineup's looking very good so far at this point in the season. Ian Desmond, maybe bring him... Oh, where should we put Ian Desmond? Desmond, I love him at this, po at this spot, though. He's played very well at this spot. Should we bring up Cutchin to or Cutch to that or do this again? That's the question. Should we do that or I mean like our lineups are not that bad though. We're doing very well at this point. I mean, I thought we'd do way worse than this. So DJ, he's successful at lead off lead leave him at lead off, obviously. Do we bring in Patterson? We'll leave in Patterson actually over Escalona. I think we're good there. And the thing is, I don't know why Escalona is even up on the MLB club, though. I thought he was down. That's the problem. So, Escalona, maybe bring him down, because I don't want to waste his talents just sitting on the bench. So, we'll bring him down. I'll check out what our pitcher's doing in the minor league. So, let's go to our AAA teams. Davis Infield, a 193, though. He's playing fantastic. Castellini, a 2.33. He's playing fantastic. Hoffman, a 3.55. That's all right. 276 for Derek Garcia, and a 3.71 for Prince Shipley. So at this point, we're playing very well in almost all of our rotations in, in my, my, the entire, like our entire system is playing very well in the rotation. So we'll go to our double A. See if Riley Pinto or Riley Pint at a 1.59, a 3.38 for Rufus, a 3 for Lambert, a 4.42 for McCallum, and Burns at a 2.49. So these dudes are playing very well in the double A and the triple A and the MLB club. Our rotation is looking very fire throughout the entire organization. So we're good there. It's all about lineups now, lineups for our MLB club. Should we leave them the same? I might do that because we won 4-0 last 5, so I think we're good the way it is. So leave it as it is, check out our scouting, because our scouting has done very well in the past few few days, though. We're playing very good. So, as for scouting, though, we scouted a lot of great players overall in the past week or two, I guess. 
as scouting. We found a few new players up there in the tops for that. We have Campillo there at 80, potential 55 overall. He's in the top of our draft list for right now. We have Luis Reyna looking very good. We got Lutledge, Rutledge playing, looking very good for us at this point. We have Nichel playing, looking very good at this point too. So, I mean, there's a lot of great talent all the way down through our scouting list. We got to scout a whole bunch of players more, that's for sure. So, we'll go and find the most important ones. And as of right now, we're scouting a few catchers here too, which might not look that bad. Because as for catchers, we need a new stud catcher if in the future if Walters doesn't, doesn't pan out. And... I mean, these two guys could turn out to be the best, though. Isaiah McGregor and David Hebert. So, he bears. I think we're good there for now. Let's go sim up to, I guess, this Milwaukee. Into the, oh, we'll sim up to the LA series and see how well we're playing. We'll sim it to, like, one big game through it. And we won that one. One Morales out for a few days. And Ike Corman's out for one to two months. Damn it. He's a good player in our prospects. So, we'll go probably about 60-day DL for him. And Patterson's out one to two months with a broken leg. Damn it. Oh, he's on our bench, so bring him down, obviously. Well, we have to put him on DL, obviously. So bring him on the 60-day DL. We won those games against San Diego, though, 72 and 3-0. So is this, at this point, we're playing very well, though. Throughout our entire MLB club, though, we're finally getting some winning done. So 13-16 now, after he started off very terrible, but now I think we're looking good at this point. So let's go to our rotation, or our lineup. Bring in Kiki Escalona as our backup, or even Pat Valaika, for that matter. You know what, we'll bring in Pat, he's actually on fire at this point. So we'll bring in Pat as our DH for now, and some of the lineups. And I think we'll leave it at there. Yeah, I think we're good. So we'll leave it at this point right there. We'll go and check out our scouting, is there any scouting done? And there was, so Ailes is done, and that's about it. So let's check out Ailes actually, I want to see what he's all about. Let's go to scouted, and who is Ailes? That's the thing. Is he all the way down here? He better not be all the way down here. And I think he's terrible, he's gotta be terrible. Is he all the way down here? Actually, he is. So he's terrible, though. A 70 potential and a 60 overall. Not looking good for him. So we'll go to... Uh, where should we go? We'll go probably about... Because this dude's got to do Lily. We'll bring him on. Probably our pit efficiency. Uh, where should we go for that? Efficiency, discovery. We'll go probably... Put him on a pitcher in the east. How about that? So Kevin Chambers. One of him. Put Lily on Chambers. We're good there for now. Let's go see him a few days and check out what our... We'll check out transactions, actually. See if any trades happened. So any trades happened at all yet. We have Matt Moore uh, getting acquired by the Rangers for Jerks and Profar from the Tigers. So, I mean, not that bad, though, I guess, for trades. I mean, it's decent at this point. So let's go to probably... Uh, we'll sim through this Milwaukee series after that and see what our scouting is doing at this point. In LA, we're a tough team to face against when it comes to LA, though. LA is amazing. So one more Alice is done. We won 90 against LA, and looks like Jack Erasmus is out for one or two months. So, I guess 60-day deal for him. We won those games against them, though. We won 2-3 to three against LA. So I don't know how we did that, but we're playing fantastic at this point. So Salas, 4 point, he's at a 4.3 now. Oh, no. That's not good at all. And Ben Bowden's playing very well, though, too. So Bowden could be an all-star if he keeps it up, though, like that. And we have Aldo Jimenez at a 4.05. So we're doing not that bad though. We won two against two out of three against LA, so I'm pretty happy about that. So let's go to go to scouting, see if anything, ha anything happened for that. You have Eduardo Serrano, he's done that. Xavier Hernandez, and McGregor's done. So let's go to McGregor at catcher and see what he's about, and then I'll go and probably just skip to the end, because this is gonna take a long time. So McGregor, he isn't good. Let's go put him on He Bear and see if he's any good though. So we'll go put Haskins on He Bear. And we'll put a Villies on probably, who else is for international? International players here. Maybe even Padilla there. We'll put him on Padilla, or Padilla, for now. And then we have uh, Sanchez on, he's international too. So we'll probably put him on any other good starting pitchers. You have Gus Person, I'll put him on Person. There we go. So we're good there for scouting. I might just go skip right to the end when I'm done scouting and done the simulation up to this Pittsburgh series, and I'll see you there. Okay, so just did a huge amount of scouting, and now we're at their overall destination for simulation. So 20 and 24, we started off like 3 and 11, so you did a very good start, or a very terrible start. Then we came back, and now we're 28 and 24 on the season. So in the division right now, I believe we're second in the division, though we're nine and a half games back of the Dodgers, but we're ahead of the Diamondbacks, ahead of the Giants, and ahead of the Padres at 13 and 39, though. They got no shot to come back for that one but uh and the last star scouting is doing amazing right now actually we got a whole bunch of players scouted now in the system so we take a look at our, our scouting board for now 
You have Justin Brown on top of that. You have Quincy Herrera. You have Davey Bear on there as a catcher. You have Miguel Ramirez, Omar Carrillo. You have a whole bunch of talent here on our scouting board. You still have tons to go and go through too. So we have like, you have Crowder right now. I've, I've fired and hired a whole bunch of uh, scouts throughout this. So you have Crowder. Discovering talent there, and he's got a lot of talent to discover though. He has a whole bunch of central guys like Rodriguez at left field. He has Antonio Casillo there and right field. So you have a lot of fielders here that you can find in the system. So maybe even go after some, like, I'll probably uh, take Crowder off of this one and get him to go and scout these guys right now because we don't have that much long until our draft is, is starting up. So I think it might be starting up on like the 7th of Thursday on June 7th. So a pretty close to the draft day. We had to get as many players scouting as, as possible at this point. But right now, we have one more win over Pittsburgh at this point. So, in a way, we're better than Pittsburgh, but at the same time, we're not better than Pittsburgh, so we have two more losses than them, and only one more win ahead of them. So, I don't know what's really going on there. I think we're pretty much the same as Pittsburgh at this point. But our pitching rotation is doing very well. A 2.97 ERA for John Gray, a 3.38 for Tyler Anderson, a 3.86 for Stephen Wright, a 3.02 for Robbie Ray, and a 3.29 for Yubalo Jimenez, we signed in relief for I don't even know where he even is at all. Wait, where is he actually? Where'd that man go? Did they take him off? Because he's in the rule of five, so did we release him? Hold up. What happened here? Oh, Jack Rasmus on the DL. That's right. I forgot he's on the DL. So I thought for sure we released him for a second, but oh well, it doesn't matter. So Jack Rasmus on the DL, thankfully, because I hated that guy, though. For some reason, he did not want to cooperate from any with anybody at all. He didn't want to use his talent at all, because first and foremost, he hated his contract because he's a Rule 5 draft pick. Second of all, he hated because he wanted to be closer to home, and Colorado is not that. And then he hated our team performance in the beginning, but now he likes it, of course, because he's not even playing. So ever since Jack Rasmus got on the DL, he t tore his shoulder, We've been playing so much better, so I don't know what to really do at this point. Maybe put him on the 60-day DL, and hopefully he doesn't come back, though, because I don't want him to come back, because he'll stink up the team again. So, Jack Rasmus doing very well without him on the team, but nonetheless, our team's doing very well at this point, though. Everyone's playing well. Our lineup's looking great, though, at DJ LeMayu at leadoff. 90 overall. He's batting through 7 Ian Desmond at 234. He's kind of struggling, but still playing pretty decent. Yeah, Nolan Arenado at 266. Kutch at 245. He's gone down a bit. Yeah, Trevor Story at 222. Pat Vlaikin at 239. Yeah, Charlie Blackman at 285. So maybe bring Pat, uh, Charlie Blackman back up to maybe even, I don't know, I have no idea. Probably ahead of Pat, ahead of Trevor Story, and just below Kutch actually should be where he's at. So I think we're good where we're at this point for our lineup. We have David Dahl to 347 for David Dahl. Hold up. Where do we put David Dahl then? Because he's going to get more at bats if he's batting 347. So we'll put him at a pat. Fine. We'll put him at a pat. Ahead of Trevor Story. I don't want two lefties right next to each other just for now because I think it might look better like this. So I think Story's good where he's at. We have David Dahl 83 overall, but he's batting 347. I don't want to bring down Nolan. Don't want to bring down Ian or DJ or Andrew or Charlie. So I think we're stuck just by default with David Dahl being in seventh spot. It just has to be that way. We could bring up the sixth, but all right, I'll leave it as is for now for that, and I'll do that on the other other lineups too. So now we are at the Pittsburgh game, and I guess I'll go in and this episode off right here. Make sure to subscribe for more Rockies franchise mode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.